Now, the global plant-based food industry is growing continuously as more and more people are choosing vegan-orientated foods. Now, Metro TV's Sarah Wayne had a talk with the founder and CEO of How Food, Astrid Prayogo. According to research, the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the public's interest and consciousness about mindful and healthy eating. This trend has shifted the food service sector towards a more sustainable and healthier ingredients. Not to mention also the issue of sustainability and how it is said the world's current consumption of meat is unsustainable, requiring vast quantities of land and water, and also being a huge contributor to climate change. Many has now turned to plant-based our mock meats. To talk more about the growing meatless food industry, we have with us on Jakarta Movers and Shakers, the founder and CEO of How Food, Astrid Prayogo. Hello, Astrid, how are you? Hi, I'm very well, very happy. How are you? How's everything's going on? I'm good as well, Astrid, and thank you so much for joining us on Jakarta Movers and Shakers. And we want to know more. Especially your startup, How Food, was just launched last year in 2020 and is also among the first startups ever to develop or uh, to produce plant-based chicken. What pushed you into entering this industry? Is it because of the growing or rising trend of the plant-based meat in the market? No. Thank you so much for the question on that. Yes, Half Food is a food science and technology startup that is based in Shanghai. Uh, we are we're producing alternative chicken protein. That means we're making chicken without killing any single chicken. You know? And our first innovation is a plant-based chicken that made from peanut. And happy to say that as far as we know, we're the first company in the world who's making chicken from peanut. <laughs> Uh, the inspiration of founding Half Food actually comes because I'm a foodie. I'm like a big foodie. Always love great tasting food, but the thought of my 30 years from now, it'll be difficult for us to access great tasting food like what we are accessing today really scares me. So we're thinking hard, like we have to change the way we eat, the way we source our food so we can sustain that happiness from good food forever. And that inspires me to, to found that house food along with my partners here. Okay. And after entering the industry, Asif, what is the plant-based meatless food market like, especially in Shanghai and also Asia in general? Is it targeted only for those who are health conscious or those who are vegan or vegetarian? For plant-based meat market itself, Asia actually has a great, great potential. Within Asia itself, the last year, the market value is expected, it, it's, uh, is uh, projected around 17 billion US dollar, where 12 billion US dollar itself actually rests in China. You know? And uh, how, uh, so it, it's, it's really growing and dynamic market, uh, really growing and dynamic market, although all of us are still at a very early stage, especially compared to the West, Compared to compared to Europe or to the U.S., then plant-based meat, uh, the modern plant-based or the modern alternative protein is actually still at an early early stage. But we're passing very very fast here in Asia, and it's very exciting. What is the difference like between, as you said, um, in Asia we are just at the early stage right now? Is it because um, the information or probably the education regarding the plant-based meat? Or is it because here in Asia, we still have that great sense of meat um, ingredients in our cuisine? So what I mean by early stage is like the idea of making plant-based meat, the, this modern plant-based meat, it's still at, uh, at early stage. It's like the, the concept of adoption is just starting like around two or three years ago in Asia, while in the US, in the US and then in, the, in Europe, it's actually a movement that's been starting from 10 years ago. Uh, that movement all comes from, from our our awareness and our concern on climate change and how how would we how would we feed our planet in the next 30 years in the next 20 years and then now uh, now Asia quite adapted quite the last but uh, we're moving much faster than the other region actually. All right, and as you mentioned before, and as I also mentioned, it was launched in 2020, How Food. How do you see from the sales number of How Food itself, the market, how is it responding to the plant-based meats products so far, especially in Asia? 
Alfred is right now still focusing in China market and about the sales, actually it grows beyond our expectation. The growth pace is really, really beyond our expectation from the beginning. However, when we compare that toward, uh, toward the real meat itself, of course, the market share for plant-based meat in general is still much lower compared to the conventional meat. Okay. What do you think contributed or triggered uh, this increase of sales? Uh, I would say now, especially in China, there are more and more and more consumers are trying to reduce their meat intake. According to data, around 39% of Chinese consumers are trying to reduce their meat intake for the sake of health reasons. And 62% of them are using plant-based meat in helping them to do so. Okay. And as you're talking about the process of developing these products, oh, of course, we come... In what comes to mind and what people ask is about the technology being used and how has it advanced throughout the years in creating these plant-based meats? Yeah. Technology, like I think in every type of, in every sector of technology of uh, whether, whether in digital sector or us in food technology sector, it keeps it, it evolving again and again and again and again. Uh, in Half Food, our core technology, we are using the shear cell technology. Uh, we are using the shear cell technology, uh, extrusion technology, and several other types of uh, technology too. So it's like combining several different technologies to make one big plant-based plant -based chicken. All right. And that means it continues to evolve and also we can see it. And, he has, and you also have seen the advances and development throughout the years. But speaking of development, Astrid, we would also like to know more about the developing industry and also the growing market sector. So Astrid, we left off wanting to know more about the competition within the industry, especially with the rising trend and also the increasing demand for plant-based products. This is not alone. And I mean, how food is not alone when it comes to plant-based food companies, particularly probably in China and also in Asia. Can you please tell us how you and your team are facing the growing competition, especially in grabbing the target markets. Thank you. The competition is actually very interesting because, uh, because like now, the, especially in China itself, there are more and more and more big brands from the West coming to China because of course China is very interesting market for all of them. You know. But uh, right now, when I say about competition, I think it's like amicably agree within within all of us within the industry right now we are not yet becoming a real real competitor because the market is so huge the problem is so huge and we we really need lots of people to solve it together and when other players coming in actually they're giving another they're giving another solution to consumers and consumers always need priority right nobody can no one in this earth can able to able to give that solution one company to, to fulfill everyone. There's no such thing as uh, there's no such thing exists. I would say you know. So the more people coming to this industry and and giving more variety consumer, it is actually a better a better option. It is actually a, be, a very good idea for all of us to do so. You know. And I think although in some way might, we might look like a competitor, but another way we're actually a collaborator to solve these big issues together. Okay, collaborating to solve the big issue. And speaking about the market potential as well as it, uh, although you are focusing in the China uh, market at the moment, but how do you view Indonesia's market potential in consuming plant-based meat? Oh, Indonesia is a very, very potential market, I would say, uh, because of course, being being the fourth biggest country in the world, that's, all, that's already a uh, big advantage or big potential, I would say. But another side of that, that actually plant-based meat is a great, great solution for us in terms of managing our food, uh, uh, managing risks from food safety, uh, hygienic safety, and so many things that, and then it can be, it can be scaled up faster and easier. So it can be distributed because in Indonesia, we're in the archipelago, right? So, so, uh, so how so this kind of product would is much more it's very promising to solve uh, nutrition need problem, especially when it comes to the rural area and so on. 
um, the data we have here, uh, how Bloomberg's data has also shown there, there has been a shift in demand, as it, especially for plant-based meat alternatives in the United States, that has increased by 264% since lockdown last year. In your opinion, is this a mere trend or is it people trying out for plant-based meat? And as you mentioned before, enjoying different genres of meat, or is this because it shows a serious change of lifestyle due to the COVID-19 pandemic? We, we are seeing this as serious change of lifestyle. Why? Because uh, now I think every one of us, many of us are more and more and more aware that food that we take, food that we eat, the choice of food that we ate, the choice of food that we take, we always have an impact toward our planet, toward our health, and so on. And I think this very sad COVID pandemic situation really, really awakened us that we need to take care of our health better, and at the same time, we need to take care of our body, uh, our 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 planet at the same time. So, with the more, more, and more, and more uh, awareness and understanding from public, uh, I see this will become a, not a, just a trend. Of course, it begins with a trend, but then it will become a new habit, a new shift, new shift of lifestyle. All right. Speaking of new shift of lifestyle and protecting the planet comes the issue of sustainability and how experts report that the global consumption of red meat uh, currently needs to fall by 90% to prevent global climate catastrophe. And people, many people say, as you have also slightly mentioned, that plant-based meat is considered to be the future food. Can you please tell us what are your views on this? Is this or will this be the key in helping to overcome climate change and preventing global catastrophe. Yes, I am a big believer. We are a big believer of that as well, because we understand that around 19% of uh, of the carbon emission uh, actually is, actually comes from the food industry, and it's actually very big. It's actually bigger than the transportation industry and everything. Uh, we were calculating, although not only just red meat but also the white meat because the red meat might make uh, uh might red meat might might um contribute in a bigger uh, uh co2 but actually the type of meat the most eaten type of meat in the world is actually the white meat aka poultry especially chicken you know so like for example in china itself last to, last 2018 uh the amount of chicken that is consumed within the country is actually already equal to 80 units of Airbus A380. So it's like a huge, huge one. Imagine that little things, um, little things, but huge. Of course, it will, it will, it will also have an impact to the mother earth. All right. Um, anything that you are doing right now, we wish you the best of luck. As you mentioned before, that you are collaborators in overcoming and also answering the issues of health that are, is arising and also issues of sustainability when it comes to global climate change. And one of them is through your startup, which is How Food or Plant-Based Meats.